Welcome to another whiteboard walkthrough. Today we are applying the lumbosacral plexus to the lower limb to see where all those nerve branches end up. So you just watched the lumbosacral plexus breakdown, hopefully. If you didn't, check it out now because it's very important you watch that first, then watch this second. Because now we're gonna see what it looks like in the body and what we need to know and what are our landmarks and that kind of thing. So we're gonna start in the gluteal region, but before we get into anything, I'm gonna label my different regions so we know what they are. So we got our different sections. We got our anterior thigh, medial thigh, knee, lateral leg, anterior leg. Posterior side, we have gluteal region, posterior thigh. This is supposed to represent a tiny bit of medial thigh. Popliteal fossa, which is the back of your knee, posterior leg. So those are our areas. So the first area we're going to attack is actually the gluteal region. We just talked about the sacral plexus. We just learned the nerves that come out into this gluteal region. So let's put them into our picture. The first thing I'm going to add to the picture is actually the sacrum. All my markers are dying. Why? Oh, that'll, that's a little better. Sacrum. The other thing I want to put into this drawing for reference point the ischial tuberosity, my ischial spine would be up here then. I'm not going to label that, it's too small. And then essentially my femur is going to be in this area and we're just going to remember that the femur is essentially right here. Right above where the ischium and the ischial spine is would be where my femur is. So I, I said I was going to imagine it, now I'm kind of showing you. So it doesn't exactly look like that, but that's essentially where the femur might be. So I'm going to erase that femur because I don't actually want it in my picture. It's going to crowd it up. But I'm keeping ischial tuberosity and sacrum as landmark. We are going to add one more landmark, and that is a ligament. The sacrotuberous ligament coming from the sacrum to the ischial tuberosity. Now we know theoretically there is a sacrospinous ligament that would attach to the ischial spine that is right underneath it. So we can leave that in there for now. If I have to erase it, I'm going to. So sacrotuberous ligament, ischial tuberosity, sacrum. Those are my landmarks. And now to add the first very important other type of landmark. There is a muscle coming out from the pelvis. It was internal to the pelvis. It was on the backside of the sacrum. It comes out through greater sciatic foramen, which is represented essentially by this part of our line. So this is greater sciatic foramen in blue. Anything that comes out above sacrotuberous ligament is going to be coming out of our greater sciatic foramen. Remember, sciatic foramen are just gateways to different areas from the pelvis or from the gluteal region and vice versa. So this is piriformis. And piriformis is going to go and attach to the femur. It's going to go and attach to the femur. It's going to attach to the greater trochanter of the femur, the very upper portion. I'm not going to get super detailed on attachments right now. We're just trying to get the nerves and the arteries into a drawing and understand their relationship to the muscles and so on and so forth. So we have piriformis attaching to, if we're just starting out, the femur. Okay, so then we might have nerves coming out as well. And we do. We have nerves coming out of the greater sciatic frame. And if we see a nerve, above the piriformis, so superior to the piriformis, coming out of the greater sciatic foramen, we know what nerve this is. And it might even wrap around to this side. This is above the piriformis. We made a rule about things coming out above the piriformis. We said that if it comes out superior to the piriformis, it must be superior gluteal something. So this is superior gluteal nerve, and running with it would be superior gluteal artery. Make it nice and curly, it's gonna branch all over the dang place. We notice how it came over here, that's because one of its muscles is sort of a lateral slash anterior thigh muscle. So what is it? Well, what does this nerve and artery supply and innervate? There are some muscles up here. Let's list them, because I don't want to make our drawing too busy. So instead of putting them in here, which I would do in a different drawing, I would put them off to the side. So. Superior gluteal nerve is going to innervate our gluteus medius, gluteus minimus, and our tensor fascia lata, TFL. Tensor fascia lata is found over here. It's a little muscle belly, TFL, that's going to then have a tendon that blends with the IT band, the iliotibial tract. 
Okay, so we have superior gluteal nerve covered. Now we want to talk about inferior gluteal nerve. Well, inferior gluteal nerve comes out of the greater sciatic foramen below the piriformis and goes straight off towards a very big muscle, which I drew branches to many different places because it's such a big muscle, it's going to cover up this entire area. You are correct in assuming inferior gluteal nerve is going to innervate gluteus maximus. Okay, the inferior gluteal artery is also running with this one. I'm going to draw it right next to it because I want to save space for other things, but it is here. So I'll draw an inferior gluteal artery running with this branching wildly. Pretty simple. They're the same name. They run with each other. Okay, so moving on to some different things. So first thing I wanna move on to is one that's gonna come in through the greater sciatic foramen and then leave immediately for a different space. So it's gonna come in like this and beeline, run under the sacrotuberous ligament, so deep to it, and then over the sacrospinous ligament, so superficial to it, to get to and leave towards the perineum, which is the anal and urogenital triangles. This nerve is called pudendal nerve. Quick history lesson. We used to be very ashamed of our perineum. It was very hush hush. We didn't look at ankles. Let's put it into context. We were not really interested in looking at this area. So it was called the shame nerve. That's what pudendal means. It means to be ashamed. So if that helps you remember, if you think about back in the day when we used to cover our ankles or if we showed them it was scandalous, this is what they called the shame nerve because it went to all of our external genitalia. The more you know. This runs with an artery as well, also named pudendal, but it is called the internal pudendal artery. But that's for another day for pelvis and perineum topics. But we do need to know its path. It's very identifiable actually because of its kind of strange path. So keep that in mind. So let's attack before we show sciatic and cover everything up because it really does. Like I don't want to put it in until I absolutely have to. There are some muscles sort of in this area. I'm going to draw them in. Four muscles in a row, really three muscles in the tendon that we can see. I'm going to abbreviate them all. This is the superior gemellus, gemellus, I don't know how you actually say it. Say it however you feel like you want to say it, as long as you can identify it. So below the piriformis, under the sciatic nerve, so you'd have to move that nerve to see these. Really help you to immediately rotate the hip because these muscles are all lateral hip rotators, so they're shortest when the hip is laterally rotated, whereas they are stretched out when the hip is medially rotated. I said it backwards live. These are your muscles that are going to help you laterally rotate the hip, so piriformis included. You have superior gemellus, obturator internus, which is just its tendon because we learned in that other lecture that its body the body of this muscle is actually coming from the pelvis internally and coming through this lesser sciatic foramen in between our two ligaments here and its tendon comes out to attach to the femur. So that's obturator internus tendon, then inferior gemellus. They look kind of like an Oreo sandwich, even though it's a muscle tendon sandwich when you see them in lab. Just look for a darker structure, lighter structure, darker structure. Don't overthink it. Then inferior is going to be a square looking muscle called quadratus femoris. So I bring these up because we learned the nerves to them earlier. I'm going to color code these differently than the orange nerves I put in there just so we can really, really see them. So we come out of our greater sciatic foramen and head down. One branch to inferior gemellus, one branch to quadratus femoris. This blue nerve would have to be nerve to quadratus femoris. So nerve to quadratus femoris doesn't just innervate quadratus femoris, but also innervates the muscle above it, inferior gemellus. Nerve to obturator internus is going to go to obturator internus and also superior gemellus. So you might have some branches that actually go through the lesser sciatic foramen to get to the rest of that obturator internus muscle. That is why it sometimes goes 
through lesser sciatic foramen as well. So one more time. Nerve to obturator internus comes out of greater sciatic foramen. Some of it goes through lesser sciatic foramen to get to really the meat of the muscle that is obturator internus. It's going to innervate the muscle above it as well, which is superior gemellus. Nerve to quadratus femoris comes out greater sciatic foramen, goes to quadratus femoris, as well as the muscle above it, inferior gemellus. Group them. It makes it easier. There is a posterior cutaneous nerve of the thigh coming out here, and it is going to come out of this area, branch across the things we just talked about to get to the skin. So there's going to kind of loop around the gluteal cleft, which is how I'm going to leave it because I don't want it to take up a bunch of space, but we're calling this the posterior cutaneous nerve of the thigh. And now that we've drawn that, I'm going to erase it. <laughs> and we're going to look at sciatic nerve into the posterior thigh. So sciatic nerve, huge nerve, absolutely humongous nerve comes out from inferior to piriformis, unless you have a syndrome called piriformis syndrome, where it actually comes through the middle of it. And every time you squeeze your piriformis, when you laterally rotate your hip, you're actually going to squeeze your sciatic nerve, not a fun syndrome. So big nerve comes out over those gamelles and it destroys my picture, which is why I drew it in absolutely last. Oh. But it's just gonna, it covers everything. It's why I drew it last because I wanted to show you those other little things. But when you're in lab, take this big honking nerve, move it so you can see the things underneath it. You're always gonna think they're not there. There's fat in that area. You've gotta take out that subcutaneous tissue to look for those muscles underneath. Make sure you find those muscles. They always come up. Sciatic nerve, I've said many times, is not a real nerve. I'm making a joke mainly, but I'm also trying to tell you that sciatic nerve is really a combination of two other nerves. And those two other nerves are much more important to us. So we have one that does most of our posterior thigh and one that does one part of a muscle, one head of a muscle in our posterior thigh. This is tibial nerve. Tibial nerve is the main nerve in our posterior thigh. By main nerve, I really mean it's our main innervator of our posterior thigh muscles. I mean it's going to innervate most of our posterior thigh muscles. So we have tibial nerve and common fibular nerve. What do we call it? <laughs> common fibular nerve. Common fibular nerve is our nerve in the posterior thigh that innervates the exception to our rule. So in our posterior thigh, we are going to have a rule that most of our hamstrings are innervated by tibial nerve. That would include tibial nerve's innervation, semitendinosus, semimembranosus, which are on the medial aspect, and the biceps femoris long head. Long head only from tibial nerve. Common fibular takes care of biceps femoris short head before leaving the posterior thigh altogether. How do I remember that this one does all these and this one is so special? Well, it's actually pretty convenient because biceps femoris short head is special in many ways. Let's list them. One attachment. It's got a different attachment than all the other ones do proximal. So our proximal attachment for a semitendinosus, semimembranosus, and the biceps femoris long head is actually the ischial tuberosity. Everybody attaches to the ischial tuberosity proximally, except for short head. It's short. It doesn't attach up there. It actually attaches to the linea aspera on the back of the femur, then attach onto the leg. So we have a muscle that has a different attachment, which also means it has a different action than the rest of them. So while all of these guys, semitendinosus, semimembranosus, biceps, femoris, long head, can extend at the hip, so they extend the thigh at the hip, so when you donkey kick somebody, you kick back, or you're stepping up, that's all your extension, 
of the thigh at the hip, standing up straight, you're in extension. Whereas biceps from our short head actually doesn't do extension at the hip, but does flexion at the knee. So it does flexion of the leg at the knee, which is essentially when I go and kick my butt. Like when you do butt kicks, I'm in a flexed knee position. There is another muscle that tibial nerve innervates, but it's not actually technically in this area, but it's not really in either area. It's such a big muscle, but I'm gonna give you part of it now because it's dual innervated. Part of it is a hamstring, part of it is an AD ductor, so it's actually going to be innervated by both tibial nerve and the nerve that innervates your AD ductors, which is obturator nerve. So that's adductor magnus, which gets two innervations, one of which is tibial, and the other we will see is obturator nerve. So that's posterior thigh. I will do another video on where common fibular goes, but I'm just going to give you the end of this picture very briefly. Common fibular goes around the lateral aspect of the knee and disappears. We do not see it. And it shows up sort of on the head of the fibula around there. It's going to be very hard to see. So we're going to call that little dot common fibula. Because immediately when it gets to the anterior surface in this drawing, it actually splits into two different branches. Because it was common until it got specific. We're going to give off a superficial fibular and a deep fibular, which I call anterior fibular on accident in this video, but I fixed the writing very, very soon. Yeah, that's right. I make mistakes too. Everybody makes mistakes. These are nerves. I'm going to say that a lot because I know what happens down here. And you do too. <laughs> superficial fibular nerve runs with an artery in the lateral compartment of the leg. Let's talk about it. The lateral compartment of the leg, you could deem the fibular compartment of the leg. That would make a lot of sense. So the lateral compartment of the leg composed of our fibularis muscles, fibularis longus and fibularis brevis are innervated by the superficial fibular nerve because it is in the lateral fibular compartment. It runs with an artery called fibular artery. So superficial fibular runs with fibular artery because everything in the lateral compartment is fibular. Superficial fibular nerve runs with fibular artery to the fibular muscles, which is fibularis longus, fibularis brevis, in the fibular compartment. Everything is fibular. We're very superficial. We can't get past it. That's in our lateral compartment. Deep fibular, which I wrote anterior fibular, which would make more sense, but that's not the name of the nerve. Deep fibular. This one's superficial. This one is deep. It's deeper. It's more profound. It can leave a fibular compartment and do something else. That's kind of how I personify it. So deep fibular nerve is going to go in the anterior compartment of the leg. Anterior leg compartment, which means we innervate anterior leg compartment muscles. And we run with an artery called the anterior, now we hate it, tibial artery. Okay, let's recap. Lateral leg, superficial fibular nerve, fibular artery, fibular muscles. Anterior leg, deep fibular nerve, anterior tibial artery. This is one of those things you have to really make yourself focus and say the words correctly while you're studying or you'll get tibial and fibular and fibial and tibular mixed up. So what about posterior leg? I sort of abandoned it earlier. Well, tibial nerve comes in here, starts branching to all your posterior leg muscles, runs all the way through it. A lot like radial nerve, if you will. Not to bring that up. <laughs> this is tibial nerve still in the posterior leg compartment. You could split into deep and superficial. I don't really care what you do. We're talking about your gastrocnemius, your soleus, your plantaris, your deeper muscles, which are your flexor hallucis longus, your flexor digitorum longus, and your anybody posterior tibialis muscle are all in this area, deep and superficial. All of it, doesn't matter what it is, is innervated by tibial nerve. But what artery are we running with? 
Pop the teal artery runs through there, gives an anastomosis to the knee. I have not done the whole arteries. I will do them separately. I absolutely promise. This one appeared here because it actually came from anterior, went through a hiatus, popped out in our popliteal fossa, is called popliteal artery, giving off our geniculates, our superior and inferior geniculates to our genu, which means knee, and then is going into our posterior leg compartment. But before it does anything, it's actually going to give off an anterior branch, anterior tibial artery, and then it's going to give off a whoop branch that goes off laterally, which would be our fibular artery. And lastly, the rest of it that keeps going down, we consider posterior tibial artery. So let's put it together. We have three leg compartment. Posterior leg compartment has tibial nerve innervating all the muscles. Posterior tibial artery supplying them. Anterior leg has deep fibular nerve supplying it with innervation and anterior tibial artery supplying it with blood. Lateral leg, superficial fibular nerve, fibular artery. I'm getting the words mixed up. So you gotta put them on a piece of paper. You gotta draw out some circles and just make sure you know which ones are in which area so that when you're looking in the lab, all you have to do is orient and you know where you are, you know what nerve that is if it's in that area. And don't worry, we'll do separate videos on the lower leg because you can't even see the foot and the ankle and you kind of need to see those things. But I digress. <laughs> okay. So the next thing we need to look at is the anterior and the medial thighs. The one thing we have not covered, so we got to cover it. The way I like to organize anterior and medial thigh is one to establish which part is anterior, which part is medial. And I like to do this using the sartorius muscle. Sartorius, sartorius. So that is the sartorius muscle. It's like a strap across your anterior thigh, it helps you organize your anterior thigh because everything over here is going to be your quadriceps and there's going to be one muscle over here that we need to worry about that's very deep so you probably haven't seen it necessarily. It comes in like this. This used to be two muscles which is kind of why I drew it with a little line down the middle. Iliacus which was in the posterior thigh and pelvis and then psoas major come together form iliopsoas. So iliopsoas muscle here, sartorius muscle here. Then we have our quadriceps, which attach to our patella here. So we're going to have vastus lateralis, bloop, vastus medialis, kind of under here. We're going to have rectus femoris, which is going to go all the way up to where sartorius attaches. Okay, so we have vastus lateralis, vastus medialis, vastus intermedius, <laughs> holy crap, rectus femoris, very long, and those are our quadriceps. All four of these are considered the quadriceps. That's why it's called quad, because of quadriceps, four muscles. Okay, so iliopsoas, sartorius, rectus femoris, vastus intermedius, vastus lateralis, vastus medialis, all innervated by the same nerve. That's our anterior thigh muscles. They are innervated by femoral nerve. And femoral nerve is a branch from our lumbar plexus. Anybody remember the levels? I'm not going to write them down, but the levels are the same as obturator nerve, L2, L3, L4, femoral nerve. When femoral nerve comes into the anterior thigh through the femoral canal, it's actually going to branch like crazy. It already gave off branches to the iliacus and the iliopsoas, so it's already innervated the iliopsoas technically, but it's probably going to give off some more branches down here. And then it's going to become like one of those 90s toys that I cannot figure out the name of that is like one of those fishing line coming out and spreading out and it was lit up and you could touch it and it would like wave around. That. That's what happens to femoral nerve. It goes like this. I can't use music, so I have to sing it as well. All right, and you'll notice I drew some stuff down here. How weird. So this is femoral nerve branching all over the place. I exaggerated it a little bit. It's going to give one branch off this direction, and we'll talk about why. And it's going to give this long branch that comes all the way down to the 
bottom of the patellar ligament and then down part of our anterior leg that's going to be called the saphenous nerve or saphenous branch. This is still femoral nerve. Just FYI, it should pierce through the sartorius and be the longest nerve in that area, running parallel with great saphenous vein. So this is femoral nerve branching to all those anterior thigh muscles as well as a muscle right over here. The other muscle that could not choose a section. So adductor magnus needs dual innervation. So does pectineus, weirdly enough. Small little guy, but no one could classify him. It's like, is he a medial thigh muscle or is he an anterior thigh muscle? How come we can't figure it out? Well, he gets both innervations. He's very close to femoral nerve, and as you're going to see in a second, he's also very close to obturator nerve. Well, I brought it up. <laughs> I may as well do it. Coming out of the obturator foramen, which is actually covered mostly by a membrane, and there's just a little canal, so it technically comes out of the obturator canal. Not the obturator foramen, but whatever. Is! <laughs> The obturator nerve, and the obturator nerve is going to give off a branch to pectineus because it's here. And then it's going to go into the medial thigh, and it's going to give off tons of branches to our medial thigh muscles. Some people will talk about there being an anterior and a posterior division, which there are, and I'll tell you where they are. I just didn't draw them. I kind of made a mess of obturator nerve just... Just bear with me. But I'm a liar and I forget to tell you later, so here it is. The anterior division of the obturator nerve travels superficially on top of the adductor brevis and deep to the adductor longus, sandwiched between them. This division can also be seen going to gracilis. The posterior division is deep to the adductor brevis, sandwiched between the adductor brevis and the adductor magnus. So if you need to identify divisions, now you can. So obturator nerve, medial thigh. I'm not gonna draw all our medial thigh muscles. We have all of our adductors plus pectineus. So obturator nerve is going to give a branch and it doesn't look like this, I guarantee it. To adductor magnus, it just goes deeper. I'm just connecting them for the sake of connection. And then we're gonna innervate the adductor longus, the adductor brevis, the adductor magnus, as I just mentioned, and gracilis, which is muscle inside of your inner thigh, and pectineus. And those are really our medial thigh innervated muscles. So really it innervates adductors plus pectineus. Gracilis is an adductor. It just doesn't have adductor in the name. So I added it just for its sake of clarity. And that is the horrifying picture that is the nerves of this lower limb. We will do a separate one for arteries, even though I did a little bit here. We're gonna add in real artery, full drawing, just, just arteries. Yeah, that's all. Thanks for watching. I hope it helped. Like, share, and subscribe. There are more videos to come. Let me know in the comments what you wanna see next. By the way, I forgot sural nerve in the posterior leg, so I'll be sure to upload a just nerves video at some point. Bye-bye.